Hello and uh, welcome everybody to a special edition of Endoscopy on Air. We are very much excited uh, and looking forward to the big event on June 4, so please join us. And we are especially happy that we have uh, quite a few sponsors and partners from the industry. Today, on behalf of Olympus Corporation, we are going to talk about future perspectives and artificial intelligence. And I am very happy to welcome Yuichi Mori, not from Japan, but somewhere from Europe. So let's see, I think he's in Oslo. So that's why I traveled to Oslo. Hi, Yuichi, how are you? Hi. Hi, Professor Ross. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. And also, thank you very much for having me in this exciting meeting. And welcome to Oslo, I'd say. Uh, yeah. So how long have you been here? I've been here uh, one and a half years, and uh, I'll be here for many years, I don't know. I, ah, but I like the European culture. Yeah, so you might become a European, a Scandinavian even. <laughs> so um, our topic today is, is uh, the new generation of Olympus scopes. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, it was a really uh, nice device, I would say, because uh, it came out last year from Olympus Corporation. And the uh, uh, functionality of this uh, novel AI device is to detect polyp during the ongoing endoscopy. It was fantastic. Maybe it will contribute to uh, increment of ADR, uh, ultimately uh, contribute to prevention of corrective cancer in the long run. So it's a really promising device, I would say. So show us a little bit about the new device. Yeah. So here I'm preparing some slides. Uh, as you can see, uh, the name of the product is Enduero, Enduero Cat E. And the important thing here is it requires a brand new processor called EVIS X1, which provides a really high quality endoscopy images during the ongoing endoscopy. But the, when it comes to the endoscopes, uh, it has a really wide compatibilities. So if you have a 190 series or a 290 series, you can enjoy the real-time AI interpretation with the use of the Enduero. So this is the uh, overview of this latest model. I see, very interesting. I think there are quite a few new imaging features and we do not talk to about those today because there must be something we can show on June 4. So join us on June 4 and you will see several cases and you can enjoy the new imaging features. So, so let's talk about the, the next step, taking away the sub subjective element of the endoscopist. Um, artificial intelligence, there's a lot of hope and, and all the companies come up with uh, AI solutions. So what's the special features of this one, Yuji? Yes, uh, that's a really important question because the, yeah, as you mentioned, a lot of the uh, endoscopy corporations and the third parties are providing the AI device, especially in the field of the polyp detection. But this Enduero has a really unique uh, capabilities. Uh, I, I would say, uh, introduce with you the uh, this slide. Uh, first, uh, this is the uh, visualization mode. Uh, you have you, you will have a uh, two kinds of modes. One is called the normal mode. The other one is targeted mode. And the if you use the normal mode, the output is kind of humble. So there is no ongoing or moving uh, rectangle box in the main monitor. Instead, you can find a, a rectangle box in the uh, left lower area. But if you want to have a more AI like uh, interference or uh, the appearance, you can check, you can select the target mode where you can find a, a rectangle box in a real time fashion in the main monitor. And the, uh, what makes this product more attractive is the uh, two kinds of the detection types which you can select according to your preference. Here, you can find uh, two types, type A and type B. Uh, type A will provide a high sensitivity mode, while type B will provide a lower sensitivity mode. Both modes have uh, pros and cons, maybe. If you use the type A, you will find a lot of polyps. Maybe you don't 
overlook any polyps during the procedure. Instead, you may find some false positive findings. However, you will use if you use the type B, uh, I guess the number of the false positive findings will be significantly reduced so that you can enjoy very comfortable uh, endoscopy procedure without no, not no, but uh, uh, significant disturbance by the very noisy interference. So these two modes are uh, really, uh, I, I like it because uh, some people like a high sensitivity, some people like a, a high specificity. So everyone has a different opinion, different preference. So, uh, so, so, so this is the way to go, I guess, because the, everything is, should be customized according to the preference. Yep. So if I can show some video, uh, I'd like to uh, present the strengths of the endo Here you can find a real-time detection of the whitish area. Actually, this is the SSL or serrated lesion. Uh, although this, uh, this is kind of very faint uh, appearance, uh, it is uh, accurately, uh, accurately uh, identified in a real-time fashion. And also, this is a really interesting case. Uh, the polyp is located in a distance, but the endo accurately identified the location. Actually, I overlooked this polyp, and uh, I, finally, I, I could find it with the aid of the endo -edo. And also, uh, you can experience the uh, advantage of using the non-targeted mode. Uh, actually, this is the post polypectomy scar or ulcer. Uh, where you can find a reddish protruded area. Uh, this kind of reddish area is sometimes identified as the lesion, which is actually the false positive finding. But uh, I, I don't care because the you cannot find any rectangle in the main monitor if you use this kind of non-targeted mode. So, so it's not so disturbing, it's not so distracting. So you can change the mode as you like during the ongoing colonoscopy. Thank you, Professor Roche. This is the all, all that I have prepared. Thank you very much, Yuji. That's a, a remarkable system. I think um, Japanese people are very polite people. So I like the idea that I have a choice which kind of uh, artificial intelligence I want to have, maybe in the morning type E, in the evening type uh, B. So what, what is your preference during a normal working day? Oh, that's a very tricky question. Maybe uh, I like the uh, comment that you, that you just make. Uh, if I am uh, very active, uh, I do prefer the type A with a high sensitivity mode. But uh, if I'm feeling tired, maybe the, uh, uh, I prefer using the type B because, the, because of the less disturbance by the AI system. So, so I agree with your idea. It's a really nice system according to the, your preference. It's a, yeah, actually this kind of functionality can, cannot be found in the other products. Good. So um, if we look at the broad picture, uh, everybody's trying to find as many adenomas as possible. And sophisticated imaging was not so successful. AI seems to be, but on the other hand, there is also a group of mechanical devices like the special caps. How do you think the two are in, in perspective to each other? Uh, Professor Ross, it's a really, really important question because the, uh, I, I guess the reasons why we overlook polyp uh, contains two elements. One is the perception error uh, in which uh, Polyp is exactly uh, exist in the monitor, but uh, uh, missed by the endoscopist. But we have the other reason, which is the uh, exposure error. Sometimes polyp is located just behind the fold, so that I cannot, or we cannot identify that. But the with use of the mechanical device, such as the endo a, endo cuff vision, uh, you can you can uh, uh, broaden the um, causal exposure. So I would use the uh, both endo edo and uh, uh, endo cuff or other mechanical devices at the same time. So combined use of the AI and the mechanical device would be the future. 
Good. So the full package only comes uh, with uh, EndoCAF plus Endo8. I also must say I like the these caps like EndoCAF very much, especially it's not only in flattening folds, but it's also stabilizing the instrument is in the left colon that you uh, don't uh, slip back so quickly. So that looks like a very promising uh, combination. I have uh, maybe two more questions. One is, uh, I guess you are involved in any any studies looking at the uh, the value of endo eight. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Who is doing it and what's the aim? Yeah, thank you very much, Professor uh, Rush. This uh, oh, it's a really important question. And uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, there is no publication with regard to the endo eight or, or its performance, but uh, uh, several studies are actually ongoing, and one of them is ours. Uh, we are looking at the long-term effectiveness of AI in cancer prevention. So ADR is a nice surrogate and endo point for the cancer prevention, but uh, actually nobody knows if the use of AI can contribute to reduction of the cancer death or incidence. So we are looking the future. Maybe our study is going to be 10 year or 15 year follow up study. Then we will recognize if we need AI or not in cancer prevention. Well, that's a, that's an interesting thought. I think this reflects uh, the environment where you are because uh, you know the Oslo team is is very famous for generating long term evidence. So I really keep my fingers crossed that this is uh, going along. And, Thank you very much. My my second question is, uh, if you look at Japan or also Europe, uh, the, to Japan R, the next step probably everybody's working on is to define which polyp we have. So polyp characterization. Do you think that Japanese histopathologists are afraid and they'll start fighting you? Or uh, in five years you say, uh, nice guys, but for the normal polyp, I don't need you anymore? Yeah, that's a nice question. Uh, honestly speaking, I, I don't have any uh, impression on the response of the pathologist against the AI revolution. Uh, but I think they will get pleased because the, with use of the AI, the number of the specimens sent to the pathology will decrease. And the uh, basically, uh, at least in Japan, uh, uh, everything is based on the fixed salary. It, it, it doesn't matter if you see the hundreds of specimens or 10 specimens a day. So they will please, I guess, uh, with the use of the AI because the, yeah, if you fi find a polyp as a hyperplastic, you, you, you shouldn't send it to pathology, which means the reduction of the specimens. Uh, that's, a, that's an interesting thought. So do you have uh, any experience with uh, the endo aid and polyp differential diagnosis? Yeah, thank you for asking question. Uh, actually, Endo Aero uh, has not a capability of uh, doing a polyp characterization, uh, but the uh, some Olympus affiliated company is working on the polyp characterization in Canada or the United States. It has a really uh, remarkable uh, performance in, in terms of differentiation between neoplastic and hyperplastic polyp. So this is the way to go in, in the very near future, I guess. Great. So, so thank you very much for showing us uh, the newest tools. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, we really both uh, want to welcome you on June 4, see all these features live during an exciting day of worldwide experts showing you all the techniques starting at 8.30 in the morning for almost 12 hours. So join us at any time. And uh, Yuichi Mori, thank you very, very much. Best regards to uh, my friends in Oslo and see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me in this exciting interview. Thanks. Thank you and goodbye.